<laughs> but you were saying, how did you link up with Kelly Price? Um, she came, um, Clark Ken and um, Mr. C brought her to the studio. Okay. And um, she just had a great um, attitude and we, you know, we clicked right then and there. Yeah, it was dope. In B and M. That's what the I uh, that's that's what um my crew familiar faces. That's me, my baby father, Q forty five, um little mama's father, true, Kadar, and who else? Oh, Kaz, Casanova. Okay. So that's like a family thing, you know, little um group group record for the album. Did anybody end up branching off and doing their thing from that group? No, not really. Um, well, you know, little mama daddy, he's doing um growing up hip hop with little mama. You know, we had little mama since she was about eight, nine years old. <laughs> so she started doing her thing. And um Q forty five, my baby father, he started um premiering in Project Heat. You heard of that? Uh sounds no. familiar. Well that's that's like a, a web series, so I don't know if he's doing it now. So he um he was writing, he started writing um for Mary J. Blige, Queen Latifah, you know, a couple other people. Uh the BQE featuring the Lost Boys. Oh, that was a fun track. That was me, me and Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> so um hopefully that can drop as a single as well. Um well, some of the songs came out though. Some people had licensed it. I gotta find out who, who was responsible. Uh, was Freaky was Freaky Ta uh, in the session, or was this be after he passed? Um, no, he wasn't in the session, and this was before he passed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not... Mind yours. Hmm. I'm trying to remember who did that track. Um, I think Master Ace did that track. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that was that was like a um, straightforward track, spitting hard, mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ghetto ghetto vows. Um, that's me and Q45 and Brian McKnight, and um, let me see, what was her name? Kelly Clarkson. I forgot the singer's name up there, but I know Tara was supposed to have been up there. Little Mama's mother, Tara Kirkland. Mm -hmm. Um, God bless her. But they took her off and put um I forgot it, Terry something. <laughs> okay. They put okay. her up there on a the hook. So that's pretty much a song about marriage, love, relationships. You got the ladies in for a posse track on six pack, raw digger, Heather B. Precious P and Bahamadia, some of the fiercest females ever. How did this come about and how was that session? Well, I handpicked them. <laughs> you know, I said, I'm going this one up there, this one up there, this one up there. And, um, you know, we just made it happen. We just made it happen. Big up to Nikki D. Was, uh, yes. every, was everybody in the studio for this one? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what was that session like? Fun. <laughs> Party. Drinking, smoking, straight East Coast. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, it was a good time. I just seen Rob Digger recently. Matter of fact, I had a show with her um, last um, December. Yeah, she told me. How was that? It was dope. It was dope. It was real nice. What In the city? Bronx. What city? In the Bronx. Oh, okay. It was at um, Applebee's. Okay. Yeah, um, Tariq. You know Tariq from Bud's Distribution. Okay. Yeah, he put it together, and um, this other lady from um, Dag, I forgot her name. Oh, she's gonna kill me, but she put it together. <laughs> but it was a nice, it was real nice. It was a fundraiser. Cool. Um, let me explain something. I think Master Ace did that track too, and that's just explaining what was on my mind. Listen up, listen good. Yeah. I gotta listen to that album. I, I've heard snippets of it. I don't actually have all the songs to that album yet. I have to get my hands on it. So okay. I have to. You know, um, Paula's Jam. Um, Master Ace produced that one. And that was a single that I had from Loose Cannon Records. And we just used that as a bonus track for the Motown album. Okay. 
uh, the outro. Do you remember the outro? Um, Domingo did that as well. And that's just leaving the situation. Bye. You know. Right. So I right. took people on a journey, on a journey to Fort Knox. You know, my life, how I grew up, what I seen, how I got there, you know, all for myself and the people. And the bonus track, Reasons. Master Ace did that track too. And that was like one of my older joints. Okay. Yeah, I did that back when I was on Loose Cannon as well. Matter of fact, I think that was probably before Loose Cannon. Okay. And that's just um, pouring out my feelings about people that passed away, you know, in my neighborhood, and, you know, stuff like that. Right. So the uh, overall package of the album, you say you don't have your hands on it just yet? No, all my stuff. I had a um, bad fire some years ago, so all my stuff got burnt up in the fire. Okay. And the stuff I had on my Mac. <laughs> so I'm going to get my hands on it. I have a lot of the songs, but not in completion. Where can the fans find this uh, masterpiece? Everywhere. iTunes. And I refuse to buy my own album, so they better send me a copy of my album. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's everywhere, pretty much. Everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, um, Deezer, a couple other ones. Yep. How do you say, uh, how do you think you've progressed uh, pen, pen wise from that project till now? You said you've been writing since quarantine. How do you think you've been uh, progressing as a writer from that project until now? Um, well, I don't know about all the slang because I'm not in the streets anymore. <laughs> but my writing skills has become a lot faster. Like it's easier for me to think of lines and, you know, it's nothing to me now. So. It's right. not difficult at all. And my writing skills for other people, as long as I know what they're thinking, I took psychology out of the college, so I got an A plus, so I can write down everything you're thinking in like five seconds. You won't even know. I got five pages of what you said to me. And um, basically just putting it all together. It's easy. And I started shooting videos um, after my Motown situation and stuff went down. I started shooting videos for a lot of people. In okay. New York. Yeah. Over a hundred in a year by myself with Word. my son. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. Are you still doing that? Nope. nope. <laughs> they told me I had to rest. I had to sit down for a minute, so they took okay. the camera from me. How does um, Paula Perry know when it's the right time to drop new music? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. How does Paula Perry know when it's the right time to drop new music? Who? Hmm. When you hear a bunch of garbage on the radio. <laughs> well, right now. Right now, I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing now. Okay. So I think my music will coincide with what, um, what's her name, The Stallion, Megan The Stallion is doing, Cardi B. You know, I can hear myself in a lot of their music. I don't know whether they heard my music or studied me or so heavy, but I, I hear a lot of similarities. Right. I see that now is a good time to drop the album. Not to say it's garbage on the radio, but I'm glad I don't hear Nicki Minaj as much as anymore. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh. She's dope. Don't get me wrong. She's all right, but, you know. Enough's enough, huh? Yeah. Yeah, they was being real selfish. Kid. And I'm, I still ain't forget when they threatened my life on Twitter, but it's all good. Hey, let's talk about that. What happened? Well, I didn't like what was going on with... um. Nicki Minaj and with Little Mama and with Little Kim and myself. So I had some things to say on Twitter. Somebody from the Young Money site got up there and said, the certified site with check will come to your hood and kill you. This, that, and the third. I didn't take that lightly and neither did my peoples. So somebody told my mother, <laughs> which was here in VA, and next thing I know, she was in New York packing up my stuff. Oh, and I wasn't ready to go nowhere because I'm not scared of anything, <laughs> you know, but, right. you know, that's what happened. And I think it was unfair. Yeah, it was unfair that they did that because regardless of what we was talking about, I never threatened anybody's life. Right. Um, who are you? Who are you currently listening to? 
Um, right now, I listen to a lot of R and B ish type and a lot of old school music. Um, sometimes I listen to the now, you know, but I gotta catch up to what's out there now. <laughs> like right. I can't tell you what a six nine song sound like, you know. <laughs> Pretty much. So it's like um, whatever's on the radio, whatever I'm feeling. But I like Megan Thee Stallion. I like Cardi B. You know, I like the groove that I'm feeling. I like the old school stuff. I love my little Kim. I still like. I I, I wonder why when they play a, a song that Foxy Brown is um featured in, why do they cut her parts out? Like what happened? Like I never hear her um parts on on the records that she's featured in. Oh, I don't know. I never really noticed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but, know. Yeah. Um, Big up to my man, Chris, too. I mean, with my man, Chris. <laughs> Chris. He oh, said, what's oh. up? <laughs> How does Paula Perry feel about the state of hip-hop in 2020? Um, I think it's coming back. I think it's coming back. I'm real happy now more than I was in, let's say, 2017. You know what I mean? I'm glad that they opening up the doors back to the 90s feel of hip-hop. You know. Yeah. And um I'm glad that people is able to have some substance now. And um they just need to stop turning everything into soft porn. Like it's not about twerking and showing your ass and getting boob and, and ass jobs now, you know. Right. Come on, right. now. You get my age, you're gonna regret that. You know. Who would uh Paula Perry like to work with artist wise in the future? Um let me see. I like making a stallion. Um, I never got a chance to work with Little Kim. I would love to do something with her. Um, let me see. A lot of people. A lot of people I love to work with. Hmm. I even like to do a song with Puff Daddy one day. You know, I like how Puffy works. <laughs> right. You know? And um, DMX, I always wanted to work with him, and we never really got that chance. He always wanted to work with me. Um, I can hear me doing a song with 50 Cent one day. He got a lot of respect for me. I got a lot of respect for him as well. And um, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Nowadays, it's time for everybody to humble themselves. You're not too big anymore. We all in this together. What about producers? Who can uh, Paula Perry hear herself over uh, in 2020 and, and in the future? Who would you like to work um, with uh, producer-wise? Let me see. Um, a lot of producers. Um, Kanye West, um, you know, he's an artist as well, but I like the way he produced. Um, let me see. Always wanted to work with um, Neptunes, Pharrell. Um, I would like to have one of Puffy tracks, you know. <laughs> um, you know, a couple of them, a lot of them. Um, of course, Primo, again. Um, I just I did a song with um, Easy for Easy Mo B recently. Right. The fuck up. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it. Um, you know, and a lot of people that have that real hard hip hop feel, that real good bass, you know? Yeah. Does Paula Perry have any regrets? <sighs> hmm. I do, but I'm over it. I'm over it. It's and, time to move. Industry wise, is that mainly Yeah. 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 Like I said, I wish that I would have known more of, of the business side back then. Um, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't have stood for. You know, a lot of things I didn't I didn't know that I was being treated unfairly with. And, um, you know, basically just calm as a bitch. You know, everybody got what they deserved. <laughs> right. So I'm over everything and I forgive everybody for what happened in the past. And that's it. It's time to move on. We do all the whole grudges now, you know. Right. What's the um, current situation with the INC? Is that uh, still a thing or is that no more? No, that's no more. Um, I know Ace is still doing his thing, though. I know he's still touring. Um, him and Lachey got married some years back. Um, I don't. I haven't spoken to Lord Digger in a while. And I'm um, Ishmael, so I don't know. I don't know, but you know, that's it. Where does well, Paul 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 Master Ace do something else? You know, I, I put the past behind. 
And, and me and Mr. C, we haven't spoken in about 20 years. You know, I told him I found some chicken. Come on, C. <laughs> right. <laughs> Over something stupid. But, you know, it's all good. Where does uh, Paula Perry see herself in the next 10 years? Living. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, I'm trying to put out a documentary now for Netflix. Ah, and I'm ah. hopefully I can I can continue um one day to um shoot my videos and on to the movies, you know, movie scenes one day. Take it one step at a time right now. Yeah. So what kind of upcoming projects can we expect from Paula Perry in the future? I mean, definitely the documentary, hopefully for um Netflix. Um another new mixtape. Um if a new situation come about for a new album than that or maybe independent so i got a lot of things up my sleeve who knows yeah yeah <laughs> um i got a few fan questions for you mm -hmm. um 69 the disciple says uh paula how do you feel about the uh changing landscape of brooklyn I think it looks nice. I think I think it's beautiful. I love the way downtown look. Um, the last time I was there was what 2018. So they made Brooklyn like you know look like little Manhattan downtown. It's all good. I love it. Uh, Leon wants to know: Did pre Premier Custom make the extra extra beat for you, and did you reject yeah. others? Um, no, he custom made that beat for me. Was that the first beat you selected, or did he have others that you um, were feeling? Let me see. Dad, he going way back. Come on now. <laughs> I probably had about three to choose from, and I chose that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how Are you a spiritual or religious person? Yeah, definitely. Yep. What do you consider the best part of your career? Well, right now, being able to make my own decisions, um, having a good manager, a good person. He's also the deacon of the church. So if you can't trust that, you can't trust nobody. <laughs> um, and I'm just comfortable with myself right now, definitely spiritually. I was in a coma a few years ago, by the way, for 10 days. We did woke know. Up, yeah, woke up the last day they was about to pull a plug. So if, if, if people don't believe there's a God, I'm telling you, there's a God. Period. Absolutely. Um, I am Wavy Jones wants to know what was your inspiration inspiration to begin making music? Um watching um let me see. Watching all the old videos, like I said, listening to the old hip hop songs. Um it started out when I was in high school. We was banging on the table, me and my best friend back at the time, Tish. And we just decided to um, try to round to some beats and stuff. After that, I took it to school and I was, you know, playing around with it. Next thing you know, I have a whole big crowd coming towards me for a battle. I'm like, oh shit, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> but I got back in her ass the next week. I was about 14 at the time. So after that, I was it then, you know. <laughs> but I'm, a I'm, I'm rhyming now. <laughs> but I was doing a lot of things as well. I used to sew, make my own clothes my own Gucci suits and shit. I used to cut up all my sister's Gucci jackets and, um, you know, Gucci bags and all that and put it on my little, you know, I had to, I needed a little zipper to put it on. <laughs> so, you know, it was just in me. It was just in me. Uh, who has impacted your uh, career the most uh, throughout time? Hmm. Master Ace. Can you explain? Yeah. Because he had control over my situation. You know what I mean? And the differences that we had back then, that would, that's what made me leave the situation because I felt it wasn't fair. The um, disagreement that me and Mr. C had, I took his name off the album as executive producer. He was getting enough credit. He was getting enough 
enough things and it wasn't fair, you know, with the people, other people I was working with. So that's why me and Mr. C stopped speaking and that's why the album never came out. Got you. 69 The Disciple wants to know, do you remember your first time on stage? Hmm. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. I think the first time I was on stage was with Master Ace when we did Who You Jacking. Yep. And that was for um, Video Music Box. Mm-hmm. And I did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Were you nervous? Nope. <laughs> I wasn't nervous. It just came to me. It was like natural. I just felt it in me, you know? Right. It was fun. I, I, it seemed like now I'll be nervous, more nervous now than I was back then. Right. Are you your own worst critic? Yeah, sometimes I am. Yep. What do you think your strengths are? My strengths? Yeah. Hmm. My thinking, the way I think, and the way I can analyze a situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Mad wants to know, what is your creative process for writing? Do you uh, have to listen to the beat first, or are you constantly writing and then you put it to the music? Well, um, I listen to the beat first, then I turn the beat off. And then I write to what's, what's in my head. You know, I follow the tune and then I turn the beat back on and match it to the beat. Yeah, it's easier for me that way. DITC Forever wants to know, do you have any biggie stories? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I remember when I first met Biggie, we was at the Palladium, right? So he was um, going up the stairs and I was coming down the stairs. So I was like, I love it when they call me Big Papa. So he stopped, he was like, oh, really? Oh my God, oh my God, the crush, he just went crazy. So I was like, I love it when they call me Big Papa. Don't call me that, don't call me that, <laughs> you know? And then um, after that, you know, I, I would see him at parties and stuff like that. You know, he was trying to holler at me. I was like, ah, come on, Big, uh, you know, we cool, you know? And then I remember when his um, album dropped and I seen him, he had on his all white suit. And I was like, what up, big congratulations. He was like, yeah, yeah. And rolled his eyes. <laughs> I said, all right, I'm going to remember that. But then we was on the road. I think we had a show in New Mexico together. And that was like the last time I seen him alive. We was in a um, dressing room smoking weed. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about this album before we get out of here? Any, um, like I said, there's some people who just logged on. Can you tell them where to get it? Um, like I said before, you can get it on um, iTunes, get it on Deezer, get it on um, Google Play, on all of them, all the platforms, all the platforms. Um, what is that? What's Jay Z on the platform again? Tada! Tada! Title, yeah, title. yeah, get it on title. I'm sorry, Jay Z, don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, get it on title, um, everywhere, pretty much. Yeah, Austin, yeah, thanks to X ray records, Cleopatra, thank you, and Dennis, making it happen, and the rest. Um, when this uh whole coronavirus thing uh calms down, does Paula Perry plan to hit the road? Yep. Yeah, they was talking about me touring um a couple of months ago, so I know as soon as it calmed down, I'm gonna have to be on the road. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I haven't traveled in a while. Um, can you tell everybody what your uh, social media is so they can keep up with Paula Perry? Okay, you can find me on Facebook, Paula Perry One Hundred One. You can find me on Twitter, Paula Perry One Hundred One. Instagram, Paula Perry One Hundred One. <laughs> Before we get out of here, you got a lot of uh, supporters and fans. I got a lot of DMs today uh, saying how happy they were you were on here today. Is there a message you can leave your fans in uh, these times uh, of uncertainty and everybody's quarantining right now? Is there something you can leave them uh, before we get out of here? Um, just keep your head up. You know, keep praying. 
Um, there's a God. We have to be patient with this. Stay six feet apart. Don't smoke with strangers. <laughs> and um, I love you and thank you. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you. I really appreciate the love. We appreciate you all the way back in the day up until now. You've been a big part of the culture. Um, thank you for spending this time with us this evening, and we will definitely be look on the lookout for Tales from Fort Knox. That is Paula Perry. I'm the journalist Sincere. Thank you so much, Paula. All right. Thank you. Thank you, right. Sincere. God bless you, okay? Also, if you've got so. any music or anything, make sure you send it my way so I can spread the word. I got you. Definitely. And I got you locked in my phone. Yes, keep in touch with me. Okay, we'll do. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See you later. See y'all.